Uh, I'm Barishana Shetol, and I'll be giving a speech on the comics medium and how you can gain a versatility in the ways of thinking by reading comics. When I hear the team of the, cons uh, team of the conference as versatility as means of survival, incidentally, I started to think of success as one of the one of the means of success and career as the essential tool of, of surviving in a, in a society. As in a meritocratic society of ours, you have to be successful in the way you're dealing with, in, in the field of matter you're dealing with. <clears throat> in, the, in a meritocratic society like ours, you have to be successful in the in the manners of the social, in the manners of the society's acceptance. And being successful is not easy as it seems. From the very little, we're always introduced with success story of our, of the success stories of the people that we see. And we always read the stories of the people who are very successful and who put their name front of it. Who put their name front and who we read. And from the mythological archetypes, from the every stories we read, we always see the successful transformation and the successful struggles of the people, of the protagonist. And that, that, that gives a profile for us. And as we're not living in a much, uh, orient, uh, much Eastern or Oriental traditions, we can say that we are, we are learned to maximize our utility in any means and minimize the cost or the burden that we see. When we're talking about success, we also have to talk about failure as in the sense. As means of failure, what I mean is we're not afraid of the failure itself, but the, what, it, what, what, what it brings, the whole package. What failure brings is the ridicule judgment or the pointed arrow upon you in the society as you're a failing object. And in that sense, uh, what I see is that in a, in a society that you're failing, you're all, we're all, we are in a society that we always enjoy showing up the carcasses of, a, of our society into our faces every day on the newspaper with a black coffee on the side. Uh, we, upon with this all struggle, we always we all struggle of success and not to be a failure. We're always trying to find some getaways from this struggle, and we, some as means of this getaway, uh, we are doing as as like we, uh, we are we are born into a habitus, as Pierre Bourdieu stated, and to get away from this from, from this habitus, we're, we're reproducing some getaways for ourselves, like some people do online chatting or fetish websites, or some people do nothing home alone to construct a dream that, a dream of their own. And for me, it was graphic novels for a period that. It has been graphic novels for a period now. Actually, when I was a little kid, I started. I was reading really simple stuff, as Flash or Superman. But my really re-meet with the comics medium was when I took a course in this university last semester. And for me, graphic novels became a really important subject that I can get away from all the buzzing of in my head that the contemporary lives of us just injects into our brain. It opened up the new field of area where I can be, where I can find myself as a whole different person in a field, is in an alternative universe. And I can be in a cyberpunk maze one day and I can have superhuman abilities the other day. Uh, actually, I'm a person that believes what you find to be true in one area of your life has far-reaching implications in other areas of your life as well. And well, and today, for example, when I was making this speech, I was having a hard time to, to like, construct what I say or if it's any interesting as a, and if it would be like, I don't know, if it would make any, if it interest any of you as I'm still in 10 minutes of your life right now. And I was even thinking of bailing out. Then I found one friend, probably sitting in the audience right now, enlightened me with saying that, as you're talking about success, you cannot think of, you cannot think of bailing out from this. And he said that in the worst case scenario, you will just have 10 minutes in just silent 10 minutes and making lots of people listen why you love comics so much. And you can prove that why comics is a, such a big source of information for you. And I thank that person right now. Uh, within the postmodern ap approach to the literature, I may say that language is perceived as an institution. And it's an institution that grows with this habitus that we live in. As written language has, has its rigidity and limitations, uh, we're, uh, I believe com that's, uh, the written language has its rigidity and limitation upon the world we live in. And what I believe is comics is an alternative medium that 
tries to overcome these limit limitations with its own, with, it, with transposing the pictures or the panels as putting another fourth dimension to the literature and also using us, the wear reader, as a bridge between two. It's just using our experiences and everything. Uh, as I started talking my speech with the matter of success and comics as a, and I put comics as a medium as on the spectrum, I would like to point out two very important person, two very important men for me, which are really, which are also really successful in their in this job. Neil Gaiman with his twitty and touching pen, and Alan Moore, Alan Moore with his solely in a verse. What I believe is they have, a, they seize the collective imagination of lots of millions of people and they adapt to lots of different, they adapt to lots of different cultures and they are really versatile in their works of, in their way of work. They're not, they're, they stand out to be really distinct examples, if I say to be. One of them can be, like, they, he's lighting a hope through the really darkness times and he's lighting his hope in the really sense of it, and the other ones has a dystopic and a dark tone all over. Uh, as versatility is one of the foremost, most powerful tool of Neil Gaiman, I would say that he's giving lots of works in different areas, different versatile areas, like he's writing novels, from children books to plays, and to, super, super, uh, to superhero, superhero comics. But what he does is, his world is kind of crushing over the boundaries or the limitations or the borders that we, that we put between us with the others. His world, uh, for, in foremost example in the Sandman series, while he's telling the story of Dream and, his six, and the six other members of the Endless family, which are despair, destruction, death, delirium, destiny and desire, He's telling, in a way, he's keeping this, this concept in our life, these anthropomorphic representations of the powerful forces in our universe really close to us, and he's gaining them a humane look, and he's making them, a, he's representing them in a manner like a human, like one of us. So, in a way, I believe that in a, in a, in a this versatile ground, he's making us, to, uh, he's making us question the real, the basic concept in our life that we, that we just accept in our, in our habitus that we never question. And in a way, I believe that I learned a lot from him, that I, I started to question the basic concept in my life every day that I never question of, that I never thought of even thinking on it. This learning continued with the famous work of Alan Moore, which is We For Vendetta, probably uh, most of you know. And from We For Vendetta, what I learned is that, from We For Vendetta, what I learned is that the oppressive institutions like government or the society has really, has put lots of limitations on us to do, to refrain us, to do, to refrain us from, to do what we are doing. And what I learned from him that the only way to have true power over oppressive government and institution is, is when you have no longer fear their ability to take what we have. And when you have no longer fear to fear of loss or pain or death, you become overpowered against these institutions. As Guy Moore, Alan Moore, as uh, he is the Picasso of his art by bridging the fourth dimension with this literature, when we're examining his works as Watchmen, as you see in this, or from hell or spam thing, we see how he's able to use the cubist or futurist tendencies of the comics medium to superbly explore notions of space and time as a reflection of our world to another medium. These can be some of the reasons why I keep my focus on this medium as very sense. They, these writers, these stated writers, had taught me new ways of cursing the reality, of new ways of cursing the solid reality upon me. They, they gain me less of diverse way of thinking upon the real ways, real things that are going around me. They, they gain me different ways of thinking. They gain me different patterns of thinking upon the solid reality upon me. And they gain me different paradigms and multidimensional thinking patterns towards the very, very solid world that I live upon and the world's so, so very solid habitus that I born in. An observer of said works does not see an object from one side. 
or what is subjected to simultaneous multidinous angles and from which the object or objects or persons or ideas could be viewed. The end result is, in terms of flat canvas, is meshing the selfness that is more truly the object than any one fixed perspective could provide. And most of all, all these writers have taught me that, I, has taught me to be open to change, to be versatile, and to be adaptive, because life as we live right now is not less crazy or twisty or ludic than the, than the comics that we read. It is as crazy as it is. And they also taught me, as I'm reflecting upon you right now, never to forget to be a strong believer of the power of the stories and be never afraid to write my own story, my own success story. Thanks a lot for listening.